Hello everyone. My name is Moose Henderson. I'm a wildlife photographer and today I'm parked in a Walmart parking lot in Chiefland, Florida, which is towards the west coast of Florida but a little bit up from the central part and we're preparing to go to a place called the Suwannee River State Park. And what we're doing this for is the Suwannee River State Park will be one of the hot spots that I present in my book, The 50 Florida Wildlife Hotspots. And today I'm going to bring you along as we prepare to go out in the field and cover this particular park. And we'll do that right after this. Okay, the first thing that I do when I'm preparing to go to a new site is to do some research. And so I go on the internet and I pull up the various types of information that I can find about the place where I want to go. And the first place I'm going to start is on the Florida State Parks website. Since this is a state park, I'm going to go onto the website and here we're going to look and see what is available at the Suwannee River State Park. What we can expect to see and find and things like that. Now let's go and pull up the park map that they allow you to download and the park map is actually a brochure that is giving you background information about the Suwannee River State Park and I will read through this brochure and get a little bit of the history and the nature of the park, the experiences, the amenities. I'll also look at the map and get an idea for how the park is laid out, which way the sun is going to rise and set and where areas might be best for photographs because of course the sun is going to rise in the morning basically in the east and it's set basically in the west and then it will stay a little bit towards the south. So that just gives me an idea of which areas are going to be best for photographs and I can see that the Suwannee River cuts through this park and there's a number of trails and whatnot that go through the park. So that's what I do to get myself grounded and what to expect. Tomorrow morning we're going to wake up at the crack of dawn and run up to the park and I'll take you with me as we go and take a look at the Suwannee River State Park. This is probably going to be a two or three day trip because this is the first time I've ever been to this park and it will take me a little while to get my feet on the ground and to find the areas that I think are really productive and areas that I can recommend to other people as a reason to come to this park in order to photograph the birds, the wildlife, and the landscapes. So I'll see you in the morning. Well, good morning everyone. We're traveling on the back roads here in the state of Florida. on our way to Suwannee River State Park. We left Chieflin, Florida early this morning and according to my GPS we have about an hour and a half drive. As you can see it's heavy overcast today and we're driving up a kind of back road, a state road that has a large concentration of longleaf pines and a few oak trees. 
This is a beautiful drive. It's nice and, and desolate. There is very little traffic here and it's an enjoyable way to spend a morning. This gives me an opportunity to think through how I'm going to approach this brand new site, this hot spot in the book. So we're approaching the Suwannee River State Park. You can see that uh, trees are primarily live oak trees. There's not as many pines as there were during the approach drive. We're going to cross this railroad track and go under the entrance gate. There is a song, it's also the Florida State song, about the Suwannee River that was written by Stephen Foster way back in the 1800s. So this is a fairly famous area. This area dates all the way back to the Civil War time. In fact, it dates back even farther than that. The Indians that were here in Florida were resident in this area, as were the early, the early Spanish explorers. So this is an area that has attracted a lot of interest for many, many years. Anytime you have a confluence of a number of rivers, it's going to attract a fair number of people just because rivers are easy to navigate and rivers also have a ready supply of food next to them and things such as that. So we're going to stop here at the entrance station and they're basically going to tell us to go forward and pick up a car pass from this self-serve area up here and once we do that we'll go ahead and put this park pass on our windshield and proceed on our way here in the park You can see that this is a very beautiful park. Lined on both sides of the road are abundant old growth oak trees. In fact, there's one trail here in the park that has an old oak that they say takes six people to fully encompass the diameter of that oak tree. So that would be a fun thing to take a hike and go see. Some of the animals you can expect to see here, of course, are raccoon and deer, a variety of birds such as wood ducks, uh, red shoulder and red tail hawks, a lot of woodpeckers, a lot of migrants will also come through this area. So this is an excellent area to be able to come and see wildlife but what really struck me about this particular park is you really feel like you're stepping back in time. Once you cross that entry gate, you kind of get the feeling that life takes on a much slower pace and a lot of the worries that plague us on a day-to-day -day basis just kind of evaporate away. And it's my guess th this is one of the reasons that people are ordering a number of travel trailers and RVs and stuff. The pandemic has kind of taught all of us that it really is important to slow down a little bit and to be able to reconnect with the nature that is out there and around us all the time. And there are people who have never been camping who are purchasing RVs and there are people who have owned RVs for many years who are now kind of trying to dust off the cobwebs 
and take these RVs out and take a little bit more time to slow down a bit. You can see we're pulling into a campground here and you can see that this campground is not like your typical city campground that's all flat open space and no trees. This is completely populated by trees and things like that and it really gives you a sense of being a part of nature. And I think that's important. We need to get off the beaten path a little bit. We need to kind of slow down and enjoy life. So one of the major activities that we have here at, at this park is taking a canoe or a kayak down the river and being able to enjoy the relaxed pace of this particular environment. Now what I did was I took a couple of walks around some of the trails and using my iPhone I took a number of pictures and this is a bit unusual for me. Usually I carry my big cameras and you know I make an assignment out of everything. This park kind of called me to just relax a little bit and just try to use my iPhone to see what I could see and see what I could enjoy. So except for the very last image, all of the pictures that you're going to see here were all taken with my iPhone. And hopefully this will encourage you to also go and relax a little bit and just sit back and enjoy yourself and take a more relaxed look at life and try to enjoy things. We have all lost so much during this pandemic and I think it's important that we all try and recover a little bit by just taking a little bit of time to sort of reflect on on the beautiful world that is in front of us. So let's take a look at some of the photos that I have captured. I think this park is a landscape photographer and macro photographer's dream area. There is just so much to take in and see that it kind of overwhelms you. As I was walking through the woods, I came across this fungus growing on a log and it really caught my eye. I like how the colors and textures kind of rise up off the bark. And that's basically what I've done here. I've just taken pictures of things that caught my eye as I was walking through the woods. This is a trail that basically goes up into the woods and I thought it was a good picturesque type of trail. It caught my eye. This is some fungus or lichen or something like that that's growing on the side of a log that has fallen down and I like the color and texture of this. This is the Swanee River and the trees and whatnot that are overlying the bank and you can see how enjoyable this would be to just ride down on your canoe or your kayak and just take a nice lazy day in the river amongst the cypress trees, the oak trees and so on. I really like palmettos. I like the textures that they make and the patterns that they make and this particular leaf with the twisted vein really caught my eye and so that's the reason I photographed this and then this last photograph was a wood duck that I saw while I was floating down the river in my canoe and I thought you guys would enjoy that as a closing image. So that's the Swanee River State Park. 
and that's basically what I do. I go to these parks and I stay there for anywhere from one day to a couple of days to kind of immerse myself in that particular atmosphere and that gives me the background information to be able to write for the book so that other people will know what to expect in a particular location. So hopefully this has been good for you and you have enjoyed this, this drive through the park. If you would, please hit the like icon and also consider subscribing to our channel. We put out content a couple of times a week and I thank you so much for joining us. I will see you again soon. Thank you so much.